All right, everyone, welcome back for the episode of Carnival Trades. Today is Monday, April 1st, 2024. If you're not done so already, please give the video a thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Come find me on CarnivoreTrades.com for swing trading alerts, analysis, and live day trading. Anyways, let's get into it today. So markets here. Um, today, a little bit of a, a little bit of weakness here to start the quarter and the week and the month. Um, so market's down, uh, spider's down 17 basis points. Not Nothing too crazy, right? Um, but considering, you know, Mondays lately have been on the stronger side here, um, definitely a little bit of a change in character there. And uh, we did pull back. What was the catalyst? Um, yields, yields, yields. So finally, the market kind of like getting a little bit spooked by yields, um, at least to an extent. We still had the triple Qs finish green on the day. Um, the Dow down 62, the IWM was down 1%. Again, more in, more rate sensitive, obviously, is the IWM. But um, take a look at this morning here. We're going to look at the ZB. This is a pretty good outside move down. And you have lower highs here. If this area goes, you know, if we look at the TYX, this area goes, this can go up to 4.7. And um, I don't know. I think that might be the, the, the magic trick, right? The market hasn't been too concerned with yields lately. But I think if you get above that 4.5 area on the 30-year, on the and um, again, right here, we're very close on the 10-year here, um, you know, like 4.35, um, maybe that's where the market would start to get a little bit more spooked and take it a little bit more seriously. Look at the dollar index hammering on 105. I didn't think we would get up here this quickly. This is resistance. I wouldn't be surprised to see us stall out here for a few days, but you know, you get through that, um, you know, 105, 50, 106 is on the table. Um, now, it, what's interesting is we had economic data, we had PMIs and ISM coming in um, pretty hot. And, but look at the, the, the ZB here. So it sold off well before that data came out. And usually when you're down big ahead of a data release, you know, the, the typical kind of thought is, you know, maybe you get like a knee jerk quick down and then that's, you know, that'll be the low of the day and then it'll kind of go through its little retrace and, and whatnot. But we, you know, this was the 10 a.m. candle here. It's where the ISM came out and we just kept selling all day long. Now you're getting a little bit of relief here finally towards the end of the day and there's the the uh the tenure same thing look at the twos um just got bludgeoned here all the way until 12 o'clock before coming off the lows so um yields definitely causing a little bit of a pullback we did see a little bit of almost like mag 7 um not really mag 7 because you had nvidia which actually backed off a little bit um but some of the other kind of players held up like see google here intraday um look at microsoft and in fact, if we look at the heat map, you're going to see it's kind of like it looks like summer of 2020 uh, of last year, 2023. Look, all Mag 7 except for NVIDIA. Um, but look at all the red everywhere else. Right. So kind of like more of like a classic, um, you know, 2023 style day here in the markets. We did get a little pop off the lows at the end of the day. It was still closed below, um, I think, 52, yeah, 52.45. So kind of wedged in between those little zero DT gamma walls I was talking about earlier. By the way, take a look at how picture perfect. I talked about this in the short video this morning. It said 52.30, watch that level. What was the low of the day? Bam, right there. Um, I thought we, I thought there was a chance we could get down to 52.20, um, but didn't quite get there. But either way, a little bit of weakness here. Won't make too much out of it just yet. I don't think Spider's volume was, yeah, it was 55 million. So that's definitely on the lighter side. It's not terrible. But it's not exactly um, lighting the world on fire. And again, we see the Q's green. It's not really the end of the world. Although I, I will say they have not gone anywhere um, in a while here. Even though it feels like the market just keeps going up and up and up. It's really the S&P as opposed to the NASDAQ. Another leader that's showing a little bit of uh, momentum declining. I just mentioned NVIDIA a minute ago. We did slice that trend line last week. And you could make a case that we back tested it today. If you cut it down to a four hour time frame, you can make a case you also got a bearish inside bar there. So I'd be watching for that. If that starts to head down, um, it's probably down into that 850 area here, you know, over the next week or so. Um, NVIDIA obviously makes up a huge portion of both the S&P and the NASDAQ 100 now. So if that goes down, it's going to put pressure on the market, most likely. Um, we've talked about momentum possibly declining here on semiconductors, right? We made new highs pretty much every other week or so, at least in the SMH. And um, we've not made new highs in the SMH now in the last, where we're going on four weeks now. Um, so again, 
maybe a little bit of evidence of declining momentum. Um, for me, it's, I keep saying it, but that's it matters, right? 5,200, we get break below that, that would certainly increase the odds of some type of a top being in place, more so even 5,190. So that's gonna be that previous pivot high. Um, and if, if we were to close below that on, by the end of the week, I would definitely think we're in corrective mode. But right now, um, we're just backing off and um, we'll leave it at that until proven otherwise. Who knows? Maybe the jolt, we have jolts data tomorrow at 10 a.m. If that comes in and it's really weak, uh, the market could flip right back around. But um, right now, yields looking really strong. It looks like an impulsive move to me. So definitely respecting that. Um, the Dow here backing off didn't quite get to, still has not quite gotten to the 40K handle. We'll see if it does that here. Um, if this consolidates enough, it can do that in due time, obviously. Um, IWM, again, down $2 on the day. So never got that close above 210. We did get new uh, multi-year clo uh, closing highs, though, on the weekly. But never close above 210 here. Um, not that it's like the you know be-all, end-all, but just a little noteworthy there. Um, and we backed off pretty nicely today. You could make a case, you, you know, a little bit of a mini kind of evening star look there. The gap up and then the doji and the tail candle. But um, again, light volume. We could always just pull back to 205 and then consolidate to go higher. We talked about the SMH already that, that did make new highs, but pulled back pretty good uh, by the end of the day. There's the Sox as well doing the same thing. Um, IGV was interesting. So we closed right into our, look at our, our trend line. We've been following this. Look at where we closed today. So right on that, this is going to have to choose by the end of the week. Uh, see, that's, yeah, that's about the third right there, third or fourth. Um, I think the fifth is what, Friday? Yep, so Friday the 5th, we'll be watching that by the end of the week. So that will pick a direction that transports, little outside move down, down 1.1%, nothing terrible. Um, again, this can consolidate and go higher, but it did back off today. All right, um, interest rates, which we already talked about a little bit here, but we'll show you the two-year yield. Um, so again, very close to that 472 area. We've been struggling to stay above that. Um, if we break these pivots here, you know, I'm just going to say like four, seven, five. Um, I don't think it's going to hold this time, right? So the one, two, three, four now higher lows. It's not likely going to hold this time if, um, you know, we, we inch back up there again and we're not that far off. Uh, so two yield up over eight basis points today. Five up 11, tens up 11 and a half and the 30s up 11 as well. <clears throat> so higher lows there. Never quite got down to that trend line. And um, yields remain firm here. If this breaks out, we're going to 475. That's on the 30 year. So we'll see if the market finally cares. Um, XHB outside move down as well. Trend is still up, still overbought, but um, again, nothing broken just yet. Would get a little interesting if we close below 109.27, because um, you can make a case you got like a little bit of an island up here. If that gets you know broken down, it could be a little vulnerable down to you know, 107 or so. But again, this has been an uptrend for such a long time. It's going to be hard. You know, dips will be bought, right? Um, at least at least at first. But um, again, very overbought here. No no sell signal just yet, though. Um, VNQ, pretty good down uh, dump here, down 1.7. Again, I still like this on the weekly. I will say that volume did uptick a little bit today on this one. But, um, you know, it's not dead in the water just yet. And uh, again, we'll leave it there. For now, XLF um, down 27 cents today. We did com we did close the week above that double top. So that is your positive. Um, your negative is we close the week back below it. It could be a failed breakout. I would say, you know, if we close bleak, the week below last week's low, um, it's probably in back off mode. But right now, just a pullback there. KRE down as well, down 2%. Still on the softer side there. KBE a little bit weaker as well, but that pattern is still very good. Um, broker dealers down, but again, trend is still up. Overbought on the bigger time frames. Uh, oil, new highs, right? So 84, uh, 49. I think we can inch up a little bit more. Um, it basically got to my target. I mean, like literally, you know, I said 84, 50, 85. The official FIB is 82.62. That's the 50% retrace from the high to the low there. So could it go there? It certainly can. Um, a little bit higher maybe. And then if we do our inverse head and shoulder, it can go a lot higher. Um, 
you know, we're not even into the full driving season yet. Typically, we peak out in July. Um, gasoline futures UGA. I don't really see any problem with this pattern here. There's a lot of resistance up here, but this pattern here can just flag and, and go higher. So um, the only opposition I would see, or the only real opposition is obviously it's an election year. The administration is going to have an interest in keeping that down. But right now, pattern looks good and it's get you know it's basically gotten to target. So if you own it, I guess trail your stop is what I'm saying. Um, I wouldn't get greedy on it right here, but it's still holding up well. Um, XLE, this is getting overbought. Um, so it is, <laughs> it's had a really good run here. Um, maybe it can shoot to double top, it's possible, but this is starting to look a little stretched to me. Um, XOP is as well, it is, you know, breaking out, but yeah, I always like to see it I'd like to see us come up here and then like pull back first and then break out because we're just we're trying to break out while we're already kind of like overbought here. Like if you look at an RSI, we're already kind of overbought. I'd like to see us consolidate first and then do that. It doesn't mean we can't go higher. There's nothing saying that it can happen. It just means the odds of a, a failed breakout are a little bit higher. The OIH here, no new highs today. So that one was a little bit sideways. And again, I'd be interested in getting back in this and, and really all those energy plays uh, again uh, on some type of a pullback or consolidation. By the way, speaking of um, some of these gas plays, Katera, LNG, um, Chesapeake, these have had nice runs lately as well. Um, EOG. So some of the gas stocks are doing a lot better here uh, and playing catch up perhaps. All right. Anyway, uh, CCJ with a big pop here up 8%. So we did um, obviously close below that green bar and now we're getting a bid here and we're into you know we're above my uh, previous resistance level next one's right around 48 we'll see if that gets up there um, but big big reversal here for ccj and that tells you buyers are still very willing to step in here and like i've been saying the sector is healthy right you're seeing rotation into the urnm into the urnj into some of the juniors higher highs there on urnm a um, little bit of resistance right here this is where we broke down from but good move there, and we're back above those moving averages. If we look at the NJ, same thing, kind of right into that level that we broke down from, but good outside move today. So nothing wrong here in the uranium space, and um, these never broke down on the weekly. Again, look at you tested that green bar low. Little test, and then right back up. URNM spiked it, but never closed below. So good, good move there. Um, Nat gas here. I'm just going to look at the K contract because um, I don't like the futures gap right now, but it looks like a failed breakdown here. So, um, you know, it's already absolutely, you know, in the absolute basement of basements. I mean, like, it's like it, it can't get any more. Like, if they, if it goes any lower, you know, the foundation is going to crack. Right. So, um, you know, and then a lot of the time when you have a breakdown like that or a double bottom slice, um, after a, you know, after you're already in the basement, a lot of time it's a failure um, because it, anybody who wants to sell or short has already done that. And uh, there's just not enough sellers to keep it pushed down and boom, you get a fake breakdown, close above the high there. So that's looking a lot better here. And if we look at like an intraday, um, it's already cons starting to consolidate on the hourly. So I think Nat Gas wants to push back up towards two and then, you know, who knows, maybe two and a quarter. Again, seasonally, it's kind of when it bottoms. So, um, I'd expect that to be pretty much the case here. Uh, DXY here today into the five, uh, 105 handle. We did actually pierce it a little bit. This is going to be resistance right now. Okay. Um, but if this just goes sideways here, it can just blow through that and go to 106. So dollar still holding up. Dollar yen still holding up as well. No problems there. That's a chart to watch. Uh, gold holding up even with the strong dollar, although it did come way off the highs and it did close with a tail candle here. I think gold's getting a little stretched here. I talked about 2275 as a mathematical level. We got to 2286 and that's where we pulled back from. Um, we also have a, you know, a futures gap right there. Those tend to get filled, but um, you know, it's, it's holding up really well. It's getting a good bid and um, it's very strong. So gold acting well. GDX also had a, a green day, but it did look at, went right to that level I talked about on Friday. And uh, that's where it pulled back here. I think it's a little rich right here in the short term. But after pulling back consolidation, um, I think that um, it can be bought on dips. 
Same thing with the GDXJ. SIL, a little bit stronger. I didn't think we'd be able to get through that pivot so easily. Still a little resistance right here. And you did, you know, you do have a big fat spinning top doji after a after an up move and a gap up. So I'd be a little careful with it in the short term. There's SILJ, same thing. Um, but they're, they're still acting well. And they are leading the metal. Because if we look at silver here, um, lower high, SILJ, higher high. I've been looking for that to happen for years now. Um, platinum backing off a little bit. Nothing's changed there. Same thing with palladium. Um, copper here following through. So I told you guys 405 to 406. It got to just under 408, actually. Um, so good move there for copper. It can still go higher. Um, I'm just not sure if it will. But um, nice pop there off the 20 moving average. Usually the first hit of the 20 after a big thrust is going to get bought, and that's the case here. Um, Bitcoin, you know, everybody was talking about Bitcoin like it's crashing this morning. Um, I don't know why that is. It was never down more than a couple percentage points. And really all it did was just test the 20 day moving average. Um, I don't know. There was a lot of talk about Bitcoin. Well, Bitcoin's down so much. I didn't really see why that was. But you have a bullish inside bar here on the daily anyway. Um, and that would only fail below 66, 412, 85. Um, and again, your trend is up. And we did get the weekly close above that previous all-time high. So again, I'm not saying it breaks out right now. I would prefer that weekly 20 MA to catch up and then it can go higher. So real simple there, it's still acting fine. Um, okay, yeah, lastly, that's it. Um, spiders here, yeah, again, down 20 basis points, nothing terrible. Um, maybe a little bit of momentum declining, but we're still above support and we're not seeing high volume selling come in just yet. If that happens, then that would change my mind here. We can get rid of 52.30 for now. Um, watch that 5200 level. That's going to be kind of my line in the sand here. So anyways, guys, going to wrap up here. You guys take care. Come find me on conovertrades.com. I'll see you guys all tomorrow.